growing mushrooms can sound like a mysterious business. They lurk in the damp undergrowth and seem to pop up as if by magic. Nick and Kirsten know all the secrets. Now something tells me that these logs have a purpose being stacked like this. They're oak logs that have been inoculated with shiitake uh, spawn. Well, shiitake are a great mushroom to grow on logs because they will grow on pretty much any hardwood. And over here we've got some woodier mushrooms growing on elder logs. You know, we like mushrooms so much, we've got some ways of growing them that uh, give us a harvest all year round. If you want to come up to the house, and we'll show you. Yeah, definitely. So what, you're somehow replicating this up here? Yeah, kind of. yeah, kind of. So over here, we've got a whole bunch of oyster mushrooms growing in buckets. Wow. That is amazing. It just doesn't look Beautiful. real. Yeah, it's magical stuff. <sighs> we grow oysters in this grow room all year round. They're quite tolerant of a bit of heat and a bit of cold. Most of the time, mushrooms are grown on, on disposable plastic bags. We just get these buckets from local cafes. Mm. And you can just keep reusing them? Over and over and over again. Yep. Now, this structure itself, to me, that, that looks like an old shower door. Um, how's this put together? Yeah, it's, this is just junk that we've got from the local tip shop. But if you don't have the space for this sort of setup, or you're just starting out, we started off growing mushrooms in our bathroom in a little greenhouse that we would, you know, mist with water to keep the humidity up to. A lot of people have a, a backyard pond with maybe some tree ferns or something. Um, that can create a humid enough environment to, to fruit your buckets there. So we might take you on the other side and show you how to make these. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. There we go. All right, come with us. I love the idea of repurposing old food grade so buckets. We Nick and Kirsten have already sterilised them and got them ready. And what we've done is we've drilled some holes in them and then we've covered those holes in surgical tape to allow the mycelium inside to breathe. Our first step today is preparing the substrate. We're using straw and blocks of sawdust that we need to mix together, along with a few other kickstarters. Then add some water and mix it all together. Roll your sleeves up, Costa, and we'll right. get in. Here we go. Get Is there any the technique? Blocks. Well, we just want to make just... sure all the blocks are wet. Do they break? Oh, yeah, they break up. Yeah. Next, mix the substrate into a bag. This is a, a special brewer's bag that we're using, but you can just use a pillowcase or any sort of bag you've got at this stage. Ah. So what we're doing here is we're pasteurising the straw and the sawdust by keeping it between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius for over an hour. The hot water will kill off microorganisms and give our mycelium, or spawn, a chance to thrive. And we can just close the lid and an hour later, all that substrate will be pasteurised and ready to go. We're also cleaning our workbench with an alcohol mix. This is drained for about half an hour, so it's not dripping anymore. And now we're going to tip it out on the table and inoculate it. So now that the substrate is at the right temperature, we can add the spawn. We just crumble it out and break it up as we go. Interesting colour in there. So this is all fluffy with the mycelium of the summer white oyster mushroom. When you're foraging mushrooms, you have to be super careful about what you're picking. But that's one of the great things about growing them yourself this way. The spawn that you buy is going to determine exactly what species of mushroom you're going to grow. So there's no confusion. Now we're just going to mix this in really, really well and distribute the spawn equally. So we're just going to get as much of this stuff into the buckets as we can. Like, um, so you, you have to compact it? Yeah, the, the, the more we get in here, uh, the more mushrooms we get. Ah, yeah. Well, well that sounds like good motivation. <laughs> it will sit at room temperature or about 23 to 25 degrees for two to four weeks until it looks like it's ready to fruit. Here's one that we did a few weeks back. Wow. So the mycelium has fully colonised the straw and the sawdust. This is the point when it's ready to, to start to produce the mushrooms. And we can trigger that by moving it into our super humid environment, you know, in our case, our, our fruiting chamber. 
And once they're in that humid environment, the mushrooms will fruit out of these holes, they'll push past the surgical tape and they'll fruit out from there. Watching any plant bloom or fruit is beautiful, but mushrooms are just so special. Yeah, they're kind of alien and uh, we love that. Yeah. <laughs> This property is incredibly productive for its size. And it goes to show that you don't need a whole lot of space to grow your own food. And when it comes to food miles, it doesn't get much closer than your own backyard. <laughs>